I love this book. Oh, I love it. And I'm so glad that you love so many places that I do too, including Orkney. It's beautiful and a lot of people will... I quite like it because it, there's ones in here, yes, yes, you would think, but there's other ones that I had not heard of before. We yes. gems. Uh-huh, for instance? Well, I like this. The, the one that I liked, I mean, I suppose that one, Burnham Thorpe in Norfolk, okay. I guess is well known, but not to me. Yes, well... That's that, the thing, you know, I think and the Orkney those, ones, I know them, but people might not. I wanted, I wanted it to be a mix of places yeah. that people would instantly recognise, because otherwise the book could be off-putting. But There's classics like Westminster Abbey, but really I also wanted to explain that there's an understanding to be had of the archipelago of the British Isles, yeah. by, which takes in places that are off the beaten track, unknown, but oh, still... Yeah, Great. A part of the story. It's absolutely brilliant. And you're going to be going out and talking and lecturing. I think this is great because this is the thing about you is you're so enthusiastic and you've got this massive curiosity. Yes. And you just will share that with and us the, all. And the, the, the live event is completely different. I've heard people say it a thousand times before, but until you experience it, you know, when you make a television documentary or indeed when you write a book, yeah. you're not with the audience when they watch it. Yes. And you're not with the reader when okay. they read the book. But when you're on stage, surprise, surprise, you can tell. <laughs> As soon as you open your mouth, it's like being a best man at a wedding, you can tell it's instantly whether they're with you, whether they're getting what you're, the point that right. you're trying to Got make. Yep. And the feedback is instant. And it's also the fact that you're not going through the filter of any kind of editor. Everything yeah. else you do, there's other people saying, oh, I wouldn't say that, and you should say more of this. You stand up on stage for two hours and you can literally say whatever is in your head, and it's very liberating. I think it's quite scary as well, I would have thought. It, it, the first, I'll never forget standing in the wings the first time, because you can hear the murmur of an expectant audience, oh, five yes. or 600 people, uh -huh. and, and I remember looking at the green sign over the exit door and thinking, I could just get a taxi. <laughs> I'll just go home. Do? Nobody will know. I'll just go home. <laughs> just pretend. But, but it must be a great buzz as well, especially yes. when you get people who are so engaged yes, and so not, interested in what you've got to say. But, yeah, obviously, you know, television programmes maybe go out to millions of people. Over the course of... I did uh, 40 venues last year. Right. And I, I probably saw 20,000 people. Which, wow. by com but, but comparatively speaking, it's, 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 not, it's not a big mm -hmm. audience. But, but you know that every person that's there has made a, a physical commitment to come and see you. They've organised maybe babysitters. They've paid for tickets. They come to the theatre. They find a parking space. They stay. They listen. <laughs> Some of them come and buy a book afterwards. And you think, these, this audience yeah. is really great. paying attention. Mm. They're really involved and invested in what I'm doing. And it's so important as well that we know, you know, because in this age where we're bombarded with information all of the time and people forget things almost instantly, you know, people don't have a, a good attention span right now, to come to something like this and to know about the place where you live. Yes. And to know about what, how did we get here and what happened? My fundamental, obviously, like everyone else, you know, there's a lot of anxiety around at the moment. Indeed. And I, I get a great deal of solace from remembering that the British Isles, it's a wonderful place. It's my favourite place. Right. And I think it's the best country. That, and I, when I say country, I mean the whole place. I think it's yeah. the best place in the world. And you can tell that so many people want to come here and who could blame them? Indeed. <laughs> and there's a great deal of comfort to be had from remembering that it's a fantastic place, yeah. the best place. There's a handful of places on the planet where you could live a life like we have the opportunity to live here. For all Very its true. faults, it's not Very perfect. True. No. And you need... So in amongst all of this chaos at the moment, the comfort to be had from pulling back and remembering that we've been here for a million years... And there's been trauma, there's been triumph, there's been pain, there's mm -hmm. been happiness. And you pull back and go, we are living through a moment, but this too shall pass. Indeed. And it will just be, in 10 years' time, this will be part of the story. Uh -huh. And we'll look back at it and laugh at some of it and be appalled by some of it. But the life will go on and That's it will go on. That's and it will comforting. go on because the, the tumultuous history that we've been through in these islands mm. has shaped something unbreakable. You know, like, you know, the, the, you know the, the ore thinks itself senselessly tortured in the blast furnace, but the <laughs> blade looks back and knows better. We've been through all of this. Wars, invasion. We can deal with politics and politicians. Dafties in Westminster <laughs> making a mess of it. Rogues. We, get, we get through it. Yeah, yeah. And what you have to remember is look at the country, look at the place, and be thrilled and inspired by what a wonderful place it is and will always be. Oh, I love your enthusiasm and your optimism. This is wonderful. You, you know how the world is divided into fountains and drains, and all the drains are getting an awful lot of airtime right now. You're as a fountain. <laughs> and, <laughs> You're making me feel better. And simply, it's wonderful. simply go and see some places. There's a, yeah. what, one of the points of the book is that history tells you stories, which I love, mm -hmm. but there are places that you can go to and make physical contact with events of the past. There are so many places that you can go to and be actually physically in contact with events from the past. And as human beings, we take something from that. There's a great inspiration to be had from going, remembering, 
and thinking, what's next? Oh, it makes perfect sense. It really does. And this is what we can expect when we go see you. We can get all These of that. These clothes, is there... <laughs> This is what I will be wearing. Well, you do, you, you, well, they are lovely <laughs> and they're very practical. Chosen by my wife. <laughs> well, she's very good. You two have known each other for years, haven't you, since you were babies? We met when I was 19 and Trudy was 17 at Glasgow Uni. Gosh. But she won't read this or will she? Well, quite sensibly, I think, um, Trudy's always taken the position that what if I read it and I honestly don't like it? Yeah. And you don't... There's some honest answers to honest questions <laughs> that, quite frankly, you don't want to hear. Let's remember what's going on at the moment. Do you That's really want to ask true. that? That's so she true. says, the books go out, they're lovely, they're pop, let's leave it, and I will... She, look, she dips in and out. You no, know, she, she should... This is a perfect book to dip in and out of. It really is, Neil. It's fantastic.